right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Trinity Continuum panel. Uh, I'm Ian Watson, the uh, content lead for the Trinity Continuum. And with me is uh, Danielle Lozon. Hi. Uh, Steve Tasker. Hi. And Sean Cleef. Hello. Um, so, Trinity Continuum. Uh, it uh, had its origins way back in 1997 with White Wolf, with three games, uh, the Trinity, uh, the original game was Aeon slash Trinity, a science fiction game set in the 2120s. Aberrant, which was a superheroes game set in 2008. And Adventure, which was a pulp game set in 1924. And as of last month, we have new editions of all three of those. Plus, we're working, well, we've already released Assassins. And we're working on uh, Anima, which is set in 2084 and uh, Aether, which is set in 1894, and coming soon is Aegis, which is set in the Bronze Age collapse in ancient Greece, roughly 1200 BCE. So we're keeping ourselves busy, is what I'm saying. Uh, would the rest of you like to introduce yourselves with what you worked on? Sure. Uh, I'm Steve Tasker. Um, I'm a contributing author. Uh, I worked on the core book. Um, what feels like a very long time ago. Um, and uh, I worked on Assassin, Aegis, and uh, Adventure to do them in like the worst order possible. So talk <laughs> the worst order possible. Should I Amazing. go? Yeah, go. Uh, I'm Sean Kreef. I have worked uh, just on Eon and Aberrant so far. Oh, and uh, the Ether Companion, which is announced, so I can say that I'm working on that as well. Uh, but that's all I've done for Trinity Continuum so far. But I've run everything except for, run or played everything so far except for Anima and Aegis until tomorrow. Uh, hi, I'm Dee. Um, I, whew, let's see. Um, I worked on the Story Path Trinity Continuum story path man i just got off the story path panel so i'm just like oh, okay let's story path trinity continuum core rulebook um as a co-developer on that with ian um and i did a bunch of rules stuff for that and then i also developed adventure and i have been uh working on doing rules reviews for the trinity continuum game line um and making sure they all kind of do the right thing uh, when it comes through the approval process. Yep. Danielle is our uh, story path guru, and uh, I take care of the setting aspect. Although, I mean, we do a little bit of back and forth, but that's mostly what we're doing. Um, I don't have a big agenda uh, for uh, this panel because um, I just figured we'd talk about stuff. Um, yeah, we got uh, Adventure just came out the door, so uh, please pick that up. It only got up to number eight on the top ten on Drive Through RPG, whereas Aberrant and Aeon got up to number one. So please buy some Adventure and pump that back up there. Yes, um, Adventure. Awesome. Anima is Anima is coming soon. Yes, thank you. Uh, Anima is coming soon. That's our twenty eighty four Cyberpunk game slash lit RPG set just after the Aberrant War, so between the period of Aberrant and Aeon. Then we're doing Aether. Um, that's lagging a little bit further behind with, um, that's uh, set in 1895. So if you like steampunk, you like War of the Worlds, you like Amina Harker going up against Jekyll and Hyde, uh, all of that good Victorian era stuff, that's all there. Um, and then uh, Aegis, if you like things like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's it's not fantasy per se. It's a science fiction take on fantasy concepts. So that is actually going to be our next Kickstarter after the current the game from the RPG anthology that's going on right now. Uh, I can't tell you when because we don't know yet, but it will be the next one. Mm -hmm. So weeks, months, soonish. Crowdfunder. I'm not sure yep. where it's going to be either. Yeah, not when I say Kickstarter, I don't necessarily mean Kickstarter. It's like a Xerox or a Kleenex. It could be. Could be any, any of them. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've got 
some good stuff coming out soon. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, Aberrant supplements in the works. Did any of you guys work on those? I worked on three of them. Well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of your work. So I worked, uh, I don't remember what order they came in to me now, but um, From the Shadows is the the spy book. I don't want to say it's just the directive book because none of them are as narrow in scope mm -hmm. as they were back in the day. It's yeah, not the, otherwise original it's edition, the original edition had like the Project Utopia book and the directive book. And yeah. this is, while these are thematic with those, they're not limited to those. Right. Um, so this would be the the update of that. Uh, but uh, I only did, that, did a little bit of that. I did um, some story guiding advice. And for Best There Is, that is the Elite book. Um, I did a good bit for that. I don't think I can say anything about that one. And there is Hated and Feared, which was probably my favorite one to work on. Um, Travis Legg was developing that, and I got to use a lot of my real-world expertise to sort of apply it to the Trinity Continuum specifically aberrant, but that is the the quote-unquote Terrigen book and other Nova Misfits. I guess it could also be the Church of Michael, or not, the reignofevil.com, was that it? Uh, there was a reignofevil.com uh, covering, um, well, I mean, they were just called reignofevil.com, but there was also um, uh, the Church of Michael Archangel, which was a separate. Uh, right, whole... but they weren't. I don't yeah. think they would be in that same group. They would not be in cahoots, no. <laughs> uh, but Steve, that's everything I did. Have yeah. you been working on anything cool lately? Uh, well, the thing I worked on most recently is the thing that I can't talk fully about right now, but uh, is Aegis. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I did a lot of gifts on that. They're really cool. Um, they really dig into what uh, you were talking about, Ian, with being, you know, this sort of like Assassin's Creed esque take on mm -hmm. the ancient world. Um, right. And I think I'm really excited to see what people uh, think about um, once they read that. Um, I think we did talk about the the names for the um the talents the the champions and uh them and how they're the can i say the names i think yes yes uh, yeah. the, uh they're the champions are sort of the talent equivalents right oracles are the syad equivalents and then olympians are the nova equivalents and that's that's roughly speaking that's not a one for one but that's it's it's a closer association than uh squires gogs and magogs oh yeah um, but yeah, because we wanted it to be a close association, but for them to feel like their own thing, um, I worked a lot in the gifts there to make them sort of stand out and feel like a thing and sort of center it onto these, um, you know, this sort of sci-fi take on Greek mythology. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for people to, uh, to, to read that and for, uh, people to see more of that as the Kickstarter or, crowdfunding uh, device of choice um, comes out in the next couple of uh, uh, months. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't worked on Aegis, but I am getting to play it tomorrow and it is super cool. Um, I would say it's in my top five, but that doesn't really mean a lot because they're only, what, seven games, Ian, if you count Assassins? If we're counting Assassins and the core, we're up to eight. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, there are... Uh, so it could be top half, like you yeah. know, basically yeah, top sure. half if if it's four, you know if it's four and above. Uh, yeah, well, my I can't even keep a solid number two. Aberrant will always be my number one. It's why I got into this, and um, hmm. I was actually so mad at Ian for how cool the Trinity Continuum core book was. Like, I just want these rules so I can play Aberrant, and I'm like, oh, this is really freaking cool. Um, and now I've been running and playing Trinity Continuum since uh, 2019. Yep, uh, December 4th, I think 2019 is when everything came out. That, that was the first. Oh, that, uh, that's okay. Uh, that's honestly my favorite feedback uh, is everyone wanted the core rulebook just to play the other thing. 
but then they fell in love with the core rulebook and, and that that just makes me so happy it was our first big addition to the uh the trinity continuum with this edition of it um so yeah that, that just makes me really happy thank you you're welcome thank you and steve and danielle uh, yeah, so um, I also worked on some uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, well, I developed the player's guide, which we just did a Kickstarter for, um, or crowdfunder. I don't remember what platform it was on. Um, we did a thing for um, where we took the player's guide for Treaty Core um and made a uh a neat little uh jazzy thing that gives some new rules for how to uh how to do heists how to do chases how to do uh what was the other rule set there's underwater stuff right well no I, there was so there was settings so there was like time travel and uh, underwater and other dimensions and interstellar like space travel for talents. Um, oh, investigations. I, I knew I was like that there's another chapter that had like some stuff. Um, so uh, anyway, that's really cool. Um, I also worked on the adventure companion which is in production right now um so it'll be the first well no i think the jump start's going to come out first because it's uh it's way closer in production um, that's already but, gone out to backers oh did it yeah okay so uh it will be the next book i think that comes out after the jump start does for adventure uh i also worked on um one of the nova books and the name of the title of that book is uh it, like just i'm not in my brain right now um let's see i There's bet i can best at what i do best yeah. at what i do that okay. one yes okay uh so i worked on best at what i do i did some uh some scenarios um some cool like set piece scenarios uh that players can uh try to like to player story guides can set their characters in uh their players in and i also wrote up some cool gadgets uh for uh, for novas mm -hmm. so i'm trying to think of other treaty stuff i've worked on recently that's not released yet and it's hard um there's just been... so much and I... <laughs> you've been doing even more than that so i'm, I'm yeah. sure it all compounds. yeah there's a yeah there's a bunch of stuff um I, I worked on Aether, mm -hmm. uh, which is not quite out yet. Um, I did not work on Aegis, so I'm a little jealous of all the people who got to work on Aegis in this chat. Uh, but I did get to read Aegis, so I guess that's like working on it. Sort of. <laughs> Close. All right, uh, we got a few questions in chat here. Um, do do do. Uh, I see a couple of ages specific questions. What are Olympians like? And uh, what can you tell us about uh, some interesting hints about oracles and oracular curses? Uh, we're going to wait until the crowdfunding campaign for those kinds of details. Uh, right now, what we've said so far is about all that we're allowed to say. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're excited about it. But please hold on just a little bit longer, and all will be revealed. As uh, if by an oracle. Yes, as if by an oracle. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what bits of advice would you give to someone who's going to run their first turn again? Do it. <laughs> um, remember that antagonists roll their defense? That that number is not static. Mm -hmm. I would remember that you only roll when failure is dramatically interesting. Don't just roll for everything. Like that's that's a key part of the story path system, mm -hmm. especially with the training continuum. 
we assume your characters are competent. We assume your characters are good at what they do. So we don't want you feeling like this game is a chore. We want you to roll when it's when you know you're on the edge of your seat and something interesting is happening. Yep. I would say that know that the characters are going to succeed more often than they fail. Uh, and that's, I believe, by design. I didn't write the system, but that's the way it's worked out for me. And, you know, everyone in Trinity Continuum, whether they're a talent or whatever, is they're they're good at what they do, whatever what they do is. Mm -hmm. And also know that um, don't be afraid of slowly introducing things like scale and complications. Complications will be your friend once you understand them. They're hilariously fun. Mm -hmm. and players will enjoy them if they are interesting. Uh, uh, Sir, uh, go ahead. No. I was going to say, um, I, I forget exactly what the system, what the, um, the section is called, but there's a section at the back of the combat section, which is like scene combat or um, for fighting like a lot of people all at once, uh, basically. Um, don't be afraid to use that uh, to get through you know, the less interesting uh, conflicts if you just want them to have, you know, light narrative weight as opposed to, you know, your big, long, full initiative run combats. Um, you know, it's there to to kind of help you keep the, the pace along as you get to your big bosses and stuff. Uh, one thing to remember about the system, which trips up some people, most people, if they pick up a system, it starts at, you know, a fairly simple and then as you get into it you you know it gets more and more complex uh and then they see story path and story path looks very complex and they go oh my god how, how hard is this going to get story path is kind of front loaded where once you get over that initial hump of complexity that's it you've learned the whole system or the majority of the system so from then on it's easy so yes it might be a little bit trickier to get into initially for which we apologize but you know that's that's the whole thing um once once you've got the basics down you've got the whole system down essentially um let's see do, do, do uh are there rules for giant mythical monsters in aegis again we're gonna have to wait for the the crowdfunding campaign for that there's rules for giant monsters in core yes there are um so yeah we, we, we do want to give you the the whole feel of you know doing um ancient myth or an assassin's creed or a god of war or whatever so keep that in mind as you as you think about these questions uh and the sorts of things that you might want to see and then wait for the crowdfunding campaign and see what's there anything that doesn't fit in aegis might make its way into uh, an aegis companion Uh, what elements could be shared between eras in multi-era games? There's a monster guy. Talents. Hmm? I was saying there's this guy, Max Mercer or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Eon. The Eon, whatever they are at the time, runs through most of them. What are they in? anima and uh they're the aeon covenant okay um the one interesting thing is for every era we're doing there's something like aeon in it uh from adventure onwards it's all the same organization but um there are similar organizations in the past so we've already seen uh in uh aether uh, Max Mercer got the idea for the Aeon Society from stories he heard from his parents, who were members of the Esoteric Order of the Aeons in uh, the 1800s. So that is the previous sort of iteration of the organization, even though they're not directly connected. And we'll see something similar again in um, uh, Aegis, although it may not be initially clear who it is until you read the whole book. Will we ever see some Aeon Aberrant Super Science examples? Uh, I'm I'm not sure what that question means. That's yeah, that's two different game lines there. 
um, for how to or examples of it because there's examples of it in a lot of yeah, stuff. There, there's plenty of examples of super science, and we'll see some more of that in um, upcoming supplements for Aberrant. Uh, Aeon, for the moment, Aeon is more or less done unless we have like a, a really good idea that demands to be made. We're putting our focus on the other game lines right now. Mm -hmm. It's it's having a, a lacuna, if you will. Just mm -hmm. uh, pause and reflect. Um, yeah, we. I'm not saying it's done done. I'm just saying we're not doing anything with it right now. Oh, I see, I see. In Aeon, the aberrant says enemy super science, so corruption super science. Oh, okay. That's an interesting question and probably not. I would uh, just take their base powers and say they're equipment. Yeah, that's uh, rules for aberrants in Aeon are different than rules for Nova's in Aberrant. Um, and that's just because we don't want Aeon players to necessarily have to buy a different game line just to get all the rules they want. Um, so yeah, uh, just use the, the existing corruption rules and just say it's a device instead of an innate power. That should work fine. Um, sounds like this game was built around the idea of making something that is depth, but doesn't make sticking to the rules bog down gameplay. Yes, that's that's our hope. Um, we want yeah. it to be uh, a framework for you to have fun in the kind of media that we all enjoy. We We like watching uh, competent people do cool shit in movies and TV. Uh, we like watching the Bourne identity, not because like we, we like watching it because he's one of the best at what he does. We like watching leverage because some, these are some of the best people in the world at what they do. So we want you to embody that kind of character. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the cool things about uh, the, the the core system is that it's uh, all about doing lots of things all at once, right? It, because that's kind of how the, the dice pool system works. Um, mm -hmm. And that makes it, you know, if you haven't run uh, Trinity before um, or you haven't run it with your table before, it can be a little bit of a burn-in of people um, getting that their action isn't just I attack or um, I shoot or it isn't just I do one thing. Um, really good Trinity scenarios and Trinity uh, conflict scenes um, and uh, are very chaotic, I find. Um, and that's something that the, that the, that the rule system really um, excels at is letting you have those really chaotic scenes um, and making them pretty easy to run. Like Ian was saying, you don't have to like learn a whole bunch of new system if you want to have a particularly chaotic scene. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> doing everything everywhere all at once yes uh if you've seen the trinity continuum players guide that we just did on backer kit uh that has an extensive section on doing alternate dimensions and time travel and uh journeys to other worlds and journeys to the microverse and underwater adventures so if you want to do your sequest dsv and or you want to do stargate all of that is taken care of right here mm -hmm. so you could absolutely do uh <clears throat> everything everywhere all at once with that yeah uh, let's see any other good questions in here how does super science differ from magic in trinity uh, magic doesn't exist in trinity from a mechanical standpoint um there there's no difference between a talent's gifts and i don't know a vampire's disciplines i mean it's it's all anytime you have a power in a game, it's basically magic, but within the constraints of the setting, there is no magic per se in the Trinity Continuum. It's all quantum fluctuations and bullshit. <clears throat> yeah, even as far back as Aberrant, the original, they were like, oh, well, what if it's magic? But yeah, there's always been people in the universe that think that what they're, they're doing might be magic, but they're wrong. But from, from a mechanical standpoint, there's no difference. It's magic. What kinds of stories might you tell in Anima that aren't tied up in Redacted? Hmm. Do you see that game as focused specifically on the big setting secret? And since I assume not, how far would you cast that net? I'm not sure what Redacted is supposed to be in that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> 
the big setting secret. Oh, the big setting secret. I yeah. got you. Um, well, there's a ton of stuff going on um, in the MMO that has nothing to do with the big setting secret. Um, and uh, uh, the jumpstart that we're working on, like literally doesn't touch on the setting secret at all. Uh, there's a lot of corporate espionage, like a lot of the standard stuff you can tell in cyberpunk, <clears throat> cyberpunk or shadow running type stories can be done here. Um, but one of our big goals was to eliminate sort of the, the Decker problem where one person enters cyberspace and everyone else just sort of stands around doing nothing. Now everyone can go in. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the sky's the limit. Just tell whatever stories come to mind. Consume some cyberpunk media to, to see what calls to you, what seems interesting, and steal their ideas. Go outside and look. <laughs> steal their ideas. Make them your own. Yep. Yep, Dixie says you can fight the good fight in Cascade at any time, regardless of Redacted. Yes. Uh, what sort of stuff will be in the Aether Player's Guide? Um, I can't answer. Did one of y'all work on that? I'm working on the Companion, not the Player's Guide. I've worked um, I I have read the player's guide, so I can uh, kind of say that um, it's got a couple of chapters, and uh, those chapters have a lot of words in them. Um, there's some mechanics. Uh, sorry, no. Um, <laughs> the uh, I know that it's got a chapter on the different uh, allegiances in Aether with some new mechanics for them. Um, it's got a chapter on, uh, oh, there's some other stuff. Uh, it's got like some items, um, some cool widgets and, and doodads, uh, that, you know, uh, etheric items, uh, and, I'm trying to think of some, there's definitely some, like new mechanic, like gifts for all of the the groups, um, and other generic things. I can say, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, um, Jax asks, "Is Aberrant still too nihilistic a game a name for that book?" No. Uh, at, at Gen Con a few years ago, during one of our panels, uh, someone asked uh, if we were planning on changing the name of Aberrant because it was kind of a nihilistic name. And the answer is no. No, no we're not. Sorry. Not sorry. Any ideas what might come after Aegis? What are the chances we might see a post-Aeon era? I am... <laughs> Those of you who have been following my posts on the forums and such for a while know that I have made a lot of plans. Um, none of these plans might come to fruition, but I have plans. Uh, think of it sort of like how Pixar came up with the idea of like their first 10 movies by scribbling on a napkin at one single lunch meeting. Um, that's sort of where I'm sitting, where I came up with a lot of ideas that we may never get to see. But yes, I have been thinking about it for a long time. So the answer to your question is a solid maybe. There are any people asking for that napkin? <laughs> <laughs> I think there are screen caps of the, the Pixar napkin anyway, not mine, because yeah. I didn't use a napkin. I used Google Drive. <laughs> People going to be hacking into her Google Drive tonight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's a memorable scene or antagonist from a Trinity game that you played recently? That's a nice one. Uh, may I go? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, certainly. So, uh, in uh, Ether, my PCs had recently just left 
Dracula's castle by hot air balloon because his castle float flies in my game. Um, he was nice enough to give them one, but none of them knew how to pilot it. So they crashed in the woods and came across I had a whole bunch of random natures because I didn't want to choose one. So I made up a bunch of possible things. And as happens, they were beset by werewolves. And rather than a big fight, uh, one of the players just negotiated with the werewolves and they left. Later on, uh, many sessions later, the same character managed to negotiate with a group of velociraptors who were the mounts of bomb throwing anarchists, but he talked them into a peaceful solution. Not the anarchists, just the dinosaurs. So that is something that sounds that's definitely amazing. Happening. That sounds amazing. Uh, I ran some adventure recently. Um, uh, I uh, we were talking earlier about uh, you know adventure. Uh, you guys really should buy it. Um, it's definitely become my favorite um, of the of the books that I've read um, and worked on. Um, and we, I was utilizing uh, one of the antagonists, um, the faction, the Seven Brothers, um, and the ubiquitous dragon, um, who's a character that. Um, you know, uh, I kind of tried to reimagine in the this version as opposed to the the past version. Um, and I had uh, basically a Scooby Doo esque chase uh, through the city of uh, them thinking they were chasing one, uh, you know, dragon masked uh, brother, and in fact there were like six or seven of them uh, just continually doing different things around the city. Um, and the uh, the scene where they think that they 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 have laid out a Scooby Doo esque trap, uh, and have uh, you know uh, this guy hanging by his ankle, uh, and then like three more walk out from different doors. Um, got a nice gasp from my players, which was very nice. know, what I'm always going for. Yeah, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the ubiquitous dragon in the actual play that Super Lacquer Studios did, did recently for Eon he in that setting was also the colony so that was a twist good way to do it that's cool um man i don't know if i can answer this question i mean you can just say francis again that's fine <laughs> i haven't actually used francis in a game or had somebody use francis in a game with me um i should uh let's see um gosh it's uh or what was what was francis's grandmother that we put in an adventure uh she is francine i think could be uh, yeah i don't remember man i've worked yeah. on so much stuff since then mm -hmm. adventure was like pandemic times for me like <laughs> so much like i'm like yes a book I made that I love a bunch must reread it if I want to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. I haven't run or played anything recently, but I'm going to spoil a little something uh, for one of my favorite antagonists. I have mentioned it on the Discord before, uh, but I'm just going to put it out there for everyone. Our Trinity Core. Uh, jumpstart. If you're currently playing it, mute your, your audio right now. Um, it's, uh, there's a cult which is setting off some flux bombs trying to do God knows what. Uh, and the leader of the cult is a guy who calls himself 2911. That's a reference to the Bible passage, Jeremiah 2911, because 2911 is Jeremiah's scripture from Abrant. So you can use this jumpstart as a way to not just jumpstart your core your core game, but also as a lead in to Abrant if you really want to. They're uh, they're testing the the quantum device that Divismal sets off to start the Nova Age essentially. So it didn't quite answer your question, but I, I hope you enjoyed that regardless. Yes, I did. Good. I like that answer. Uh, somebody's asking if we have any merch. There's still a Redbubble store, right? 
yes, uh, we have our uh, Onyx Path Thread Bubble Store. Let me just grab a link and drop that. Honestly, we really need to get more merch. I mean, you're not wrong, but usually we only do merch if we don't have like a, a book release during that week. I know. I'm just um, saying. Like, and lately, like I think in the entirety of 2022, there was only one week where we didn't have a book release. So merch was scarce, but everything we do has been on there since the beginning. So we have hundreds and hundreds of, um, of uh, various designs and things you can put those designs on. Are you guys a fan of the Krakoan era of X-Men? I don't know what that is, so no? Yeah, I'm a huge fan. I could talk about comics for hours, and there you can find podcasts with me doing so. Um, but yeah, I love the Krakoan age of X-Men. It would be a really cool uh, setting for a Trinity-esque uh, aberrant book because it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm writing a LARP uh, based on Hellfire Gala, which is a big event that they do um, for that each year. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be an awesome uh, setting or thing for uh, aberrant. Um, but yeah, I love Krakow. Cool. I don't have time to talk about my full comic book uh, issues, but yes, it's it's a great story, um, <laughs> and it's very good if you especially like the Terrigen. Awesome. Might have to track that down then. It's long. There's a lot of it. For fun speculation, if you're going to add a ninth Psy aptitude to Aeon, what would it be? Ooh. Time. Coronal manipulation. All right. I see that. Dang it. You stole my answer. <laughs> um, I don't know. That's hard. Because I think with... Like, if you see the quantum kinetics as sort of the scions mimicking novas, chronokinesis would sort of be taking on what talents do. Or at least the, the, the Max Mercer level talents. Um, if I were to do it, I think maybe um, I was actually looking through the original D&D &D guide to psionics. Uh, not too long ago, and they have a series of, of disciplines which are essentially aptitudes. And the big one they have that we don't is sort of um, meta psi. So one that deals with manipulating psi itself. You can boost someone else's power. You can um, manipulate the flow of energies. So we don't really have anything that does that. Mm -hmm. So that might be interesting to do. I think almost any effect, if you can't find it specifically in the mode dots, uh, in Prometheus Unbound Chapter 9, Leith went into great detail on the depths of the aptitudes and what they're like. So, yeah, they could probably find a way to do it. Yeah, there's the, the existing system has a lot of flexibility, more than you might think on how to accomplish various powers, uh, various effects, rather. Uh, not entirely unlike uh, Mage's Sphere system. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot you can accomplish, but there are some blind spots um, in terms of you know, how much of the world can I affect. <clears throat> what's your favorite, sorry, what's your personal Trinity theme song? What era? Yeah. Because for core, it's the Knight Rider theme. Mm. Good one. I'm running a lot of adventure right now, uh, which I usually play jazz as uh, or other sorts of big band mm -hmm. uh, music um, for like fight scenes when I'm running it. Various Indiana Jones soundtracks are, are great for that. 
Yeah. Anyone have any good suggestions for Bronze Age Collapse playlists on Spotify? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not a lot of demand for that, I don't think. Um, yeah, aside from, I, I think I looked up the uh, soundtrack to Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and while it does, it is, you know, designed to sound good to modern ears, it does use a lot of ancient instruments in the instrumentation, so it does, you know, give that sound of classic Greece, mm -hmm. which is nice. Um, yeah, I guess sort of my soundtrack for Trinity really depends on what game line and what specifically you're doing with it. Like if I was doing um, a game of Les Fantômes, that would be completely different than what I might be doing if I do um, like a Triton Foundation or uh, Pharaoh's Light Keepers. So it really depends. There's not one overarching theme because Trinity just does so much. Hmm. Theme song. I'm, you know, I'm really bad at, you know how people like, oh, they make Pinterest boards or they make playlists for characters or they, I'm actually really terrible at all of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I, uh, I listen to a lot of, uh, metal and uh, like tech techno music and dubstep. Um, and none of that really just like flows with Trinity <laughs> necessarily. Um, True. so yeah, it's, it's hard for me to answer that question. Man, I'm, I'm like really bad at every question that's coming up right now. That's like, what would you do? And I'm like, I have no thoughts. Well, then how about we just get rid of you? Oh, I guess I will be banished. <laughs> that's I actually really convenient because I need to leave soon because I'm going to be running an actual play for Story Path Ultra over at Dork Tales uh, in like 17 minutes. I'm like looking yeah. at the time. Um, so I, I do actually, in fact, need to leave. Yes. So uh, we'll be taking a very brief break while uh, our tech sort of rearranges our placement on screen. So grab a drink, grab a snack. Uh, we'll be right back. Yeah. After these messages. And we're back. Uh, I hope you all returned to the computer from wherever you left. Um, let's see, were there any cool questions in our absence? Uh, what got you into tabletop? Oh, geez. For me, that was a long, long, long time ago. Um, probably grade three, I talked to a friend and said, 
uh, I, I've heard about this thing called D and D. Can you tell me about it? And uh, he spent recess telling me all about the rules, and all of it went right over my head because <laughs> w- what's that going to mean to me? And then a couple months later, I spoke to a different friend, and he's he just said, "How about I run you through a game?" And from then on, I was hooked. Magic the Gathering. Uh, I played that briefly, but then I found Rage, which for anyone who knows where the Apocalypse was uh, the card game for that. And then that got me into that. And then it's just been downhill from there or uphill because now I'm here on this panel for you. Uh, Baldur's Gate 2, Throne of Ball, and then Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Um, I was uh, big into competitive fighting games and then i got into there's other game genres and uh you know i didn't actually get to play a, an rpg for a few years after playing those but those really kind of got me into it bloodlines was huge and still is in terms of sort of onboarding people to vampire the masquerade um and as some of you know i contribute to the unofficial patch and i've got uh, a couple of my own mods out there um, I, I didn't know that thank you you're <laughs> uh, so, I will not play it again. I will not do it. I'm not going to play it right now. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm not going to plug it too much because it's not an ox path thing. But like, yeah, it, um, if if you have more questions, you can always hit me up later. Um, I might. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of other. There's a questions. setting question about the Galatea. Oh, oh yes, highlighted too. I've never been clear on this. Did the Galatea actually have anything to do with Mal's plan or was it just terrible coincidence of timing? Uh, we haven't specifically said what was going on with the Galatea, although in my head, you know what? I don't think it was even put down in first edition. I think it might might have just been developer commentary, but in my head, it's the same thing. Uh, what happened was Mal did his thing uh, setting off his quantum explosion, and rather than Randall Portman, the fireman, uh, the first known Nova was someone on board the Galatea, and that's why it exploded. It was a particularly nasty eruption. Well, would, would uh, they be a known Nova? Well, known to us. Um, if you're not counting, like, the first Nova of the Nova age, I should say, because I'm not counting people like Divis Mal in that uh, so, yeah, uh, the, the first eruption on the Galatea was just purely, like, it, it was just an accident, uh, but it it was enough to sort of point everyone's fingers the wrong way. Everyone thought it was the fallout from the Galatea, when in fact it was Divis Mal and his bunker just pumping juice into his machine to have it spread around the world. Uh, I tend to stick to one system if I really like it. Is Trinity easy enough to retexture into being a different story or setting? Trinity covers a lot. Uh, so, so long as your story is sort of in that action adventure, vaguely sci fi ish genre, then yeah, we can probably handle it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're doing something more mythical, uh, that would be handled by, say, Scion. Uh, that's S C I O N, not P S I O N where you play the children of the gods. Uh, Story Path also has uh, Dystopia Rising Evolution, which is sort of uh, Fallout meets Mad Max meets The Last of Us. And um, Matthews, they came from Beneath the Sea and that family of games. They came from Beyond the Grave, they came from Classified, they came from the Cyclops' Cave, all of that stuff. Yeah, you could do just about anything. Uh... One thing I actually meant to recommend this panel is buy all the books. They all work together. I'm not just saying that to because I don't I don't get residuals, but there are useful rules and traits in all of the books. Uh, the guy who talked down the Velociraptors in Aether was using an edge from Terra Firma from Eon that just worked perfect for his character. So there is a lot of stuff in them that great smart people have written that is very fun to use. Yeah, mechanically, you, you can just take bits and pieces from everywhere. Uh, and also, setting-wise, once you... Like, for those of you who have picked up 
uh, Earth Dawn and Shadowrun. Those are set thousands and thousands of years apart. They're owned by different companies now, I think, so the connections aren't as clear, but there are sort of little connections you can draw between those two settings because they do take place, or originally they took place in the same universe. So imagine that times eight. We have all of these games, all of them sort of built to be used separately, but they are all part of the same continuum. So for example, if you see uh, the, the division of the US government branch nine in Adventure, then you go to Trinity Modern and look at the organization nine, and then go to Aberrant and look at the directive, <coughs> and then go to Anima and look at IX security. It's all the same organization. <coughs> they can trace their development over time. And then something happens to them. Yeah, well, they don't, uh, they don't get a whole lot of business after Cascade collapses. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, will Enema have fantasy-like mechanics in Terra Surge? Yes. Uh, if you've backed the Kickstarter, uh, uh, you have already seen the Terra Surge section of the rules. Uh, the rules that we used for the Animas, which are in-game avatars, uh, are roughly the same rules that we use for um, wrestling personas in uh, the... Uh, NWE Unleashed, our wrestling book for Aberrant. We actually came up with the animal ones first and then did the wrestling game. Uh, the wrestling book was published first. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a full rule set, so it's not a full, like, you can play a fantasy game with this. Uh, it's meant to be sort of a subset where you know you are your character is playing a character. But yes, uh, there are fancy rules with monsters and leveling up and hit points and and all of that. We probably should have led with the fact that there's professional wrestling rules. <laughs> well, yes, um, Aberrant has uh, yeah a, a book where you can play a professional wrestler with superpowers. Or there's also Nova Combat, which is sort of underground fighting slash MMA. We're so, pretty sure they would work for every era. I mean, yeah, if if you wanted to, to have like a Scion wrestling league, I'm sure you could probably do that too. Or like a caged fisticuffs bout in, in Aether. In cage fighting. Uh, so you, can I run Star Trek using Trinity rules? I mean, I don't see why not. You might need to do a bit of fudging. It do, does lend itself a bit more towards Mass Effect than Star Trek, but I mean, sure. I'm not going to say you can or can't, but I am going to say that the all of the title cards for my current game use the Star Trek Enterprise font. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you, you absolutely can. It, uh, it has been a long road getting from there to here. <laughs> as long as you have faith. Faith of the heart. Uh, let's see, we got six minutes left. Does anyone else have any cool, fun questions? Or Steve and Sean, do you have any anything that you would like to blurt out that uh, relevant to what we're, we're, we're doing here? Um, okay, well, everything that that last sentence just kind of sorry. <laughs> uh, I think we covered most of what like. I had to talk about Trinity wise. So if anyone has any other questions, that'd be cool. Sean? Uh, I don't think there's anything I can ramble about that I'm allowed to. <laughs> um, you can plug some of your work on the uh, Starpath Nexus. I, I, I have a whole panel for that tonight. Okay. <laughs> content panel. But yes, everyone uh, should go to that panel tonight then. Yes, yeah. I have about. 15 to 20 community content titles for the Trinity Continuum up on the Nexus. I uh, I do a lot of those. Um, but also, and uh, I hope I don't get too much trouble for this, I did get to write a little bio of an old 1E character for Hated. I think it was for Hated and Feared. Might not have been. It's just a little, one of the little bio boxes, and I'm super excited about that. We, we did a lot of that. That was pretty much the entirety of the Proteus Nova Compendium was just 
updating uh, Winnie characters. And it's something I like because both because the fans get to see these characters return and also because, um, I mean, we're updating them for the new setting because this isn't Winnie, things are different now. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's nice to sort of see those old characters through a new lens, if you will. Um, yeah. Pursuer having tracking powers makes a lot more sense than being Gravity Guile from Street Fighter. Right. It's like um, in Deadpool, when they got uh, Negasonic Teenage War uh, Warhead, original powers didn't have anything to do with exploding. But Deadpool said, well, what if she just blows up like a warhead? That makes sense. And that makes, you know, that's that's so much better. I think that has been retconned into comics by now. Yep. Probably. They they retconned most of the movie stuff back into the comics because, I mean, movies kind of, like, if you're coming into the comics these days, you're probably doing it from the movies. So that's why... Uh, um, Nick, Fury. Okay. Um, that's why he looks like Samuel Jackson uh, in the, the mainline Marvel Universe now. Although that started because he looked like Samuel Jackson in the comics first. Yes. Nope. First on. that was yeah. Ultimates, and then the universes merged, and then he was technically Nick Fury Jr. or whatever it is, and the old one retired, yada yada. But Nick Fury is Sam Jackson. Yes. Although Nick Fury is uh, doing stuff on the moon, I think. The original, Ooh, yeah. Fantastic. Why are Onyx Path employees so cool and stylish? No, thank you. Yep. Because our wives pick out our glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Those are some pretty nice glasses. Thank you. I'm jealous of the blue. <laughs> you too can have blue glasses. It's blue not the glasses. only pair in the world. And blue hair, I'm going to look like a blueberry. Mm. All right, I think we're wrapping up here. So, um, Again, I'm uh, Ian. I'm our content lead for Trinity Continuum. You can find me here at uh, Von Aether uh, on social media. Uh, that's on Twitter, and I'm on uh, Mastodon at Dice Camp. Um, yeah, and I'm all over the place on Discord and on the Onyx Path website. John, Steve, where can we find you? Uh, I am on Twitter officially, technically, uh, at Sean Kreef. I am never really on it, but if you need me somehow, you can reach me there, but it's probably best to find me on the Onyx Path or Trinity Continuum Discords and just send me a message. Uh, I've had people randomly send me messages about rules questions in the middle of me running a game. So that was both flattering and confusing. Uh, I am, my Twitter got hacked in the great Elon Muskening of, uh, Twitter. So I have not bothered to restore it. Um, you can find me, my stuff on drive through RPG and you can, uh, I think I'm on the forums, but I can't remember my name right now. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. And I think we're going to raid over to, where is Daniel's game? Is that, uh, Dorktales? So let's uh, let's throw everyone over there. So thank you for joining us, and uh, I hope you, if you have any more questions that we couldn't answer here, uh, please join us on the the Aegis Kickstarter uh, or crowdfunding campaign in a month or two, or uh, on Discord. Just uh, find us and ask your questions there. Thank you again. Take care. <laughs>